Absolutely. Thank you. Certainly. Thank <laughs> you. 
Students and uh, students and families, will we will get started shortly. We are still waiting, giving a little bit more time for some of the other families to get from the parking lot to to the room. So uh, sit tight. We will start shortly. Can you all hear me? Yeah. There we go. Now we can begin. 
Uh, good evening and welcome students, faculty, staff, family and friends to the 2022, I almost said 21, but we have done, with, we're done with that year, uh, to the 2022 Light the Lamp Pinning Ceremony at the University of Texas at Austin School of Nursing. Uh, we are so happy that all of you could join us tonight. Of course, we postponed this a little bit so that we could uh, be together in this setting and hello to all of you that are getting me virtually in the other two rooms here and again we're just it's it's thrilling to see you all here and to have your family members as well some 170 years ago uh, Florence Nightingale the founder of modern nursing used her lamp as a beacon in the night to comfort and guide the care of wounded in military hospitals her light has blazed a path of service through the countless nurses who have followed in her footsteps. Today, our Light the Lamp ceremony and event celebrates the flame of Florence Nightingale's legacy. And I want you each to reflect for a moment on the key themes of her legacy and how important each of those remains today. These themes, in my opinion, are the use of evidence, which we might call research, right? Ventilation, clean air and the ability to access it. That's been very important during these times. And of course, we're running air purifiers all around the building here. Personal and household cleanliness, patient observation, proper management of the environment, and advocacy. This was in the 1850s. These are still so resonant today in the work that we do. But most importantly, what Florence Nightingale taught those first trained nurses, that's what they called them. Instead of educated, they said trained. She taught them the skills and habits of observation and assessment, including what and how to observe and how to report facts rather than opinions. And I know that all of you have learned those skills very well. Tonight, we symbolically take up our own lanterns of compassionate, competent caring, each in our own way to more brightly walk our own path of service to the world. Through humanistic, patient-centered care, let us be the keepers of that flame and emphasize a value that has been at the center of what we teach and practice at the University of Texas at Austin School of Nursing. You are our 14th group of students who will take an oath to provide compassionate care prior or shortly thereafter beginning your clinical experiences at the School of Nursing. You're the first group to take the Nightingale Pledge to provide high quality and compassionate care and the lamp lighting ceremony formally recognizes a student's entry into the nursing profession. As part of today's ceremony, you will each receive a specially designed pen for nursing students to serve as a visual reminder of your commitment as a nurse to provide competent and compassionate care. By having the School of Nursing host today's Light the Lamp ceremony, I am reiterating to you, Longhorn nursing students, two important messages. First, that competent, compassionate care is the hallmark of clinical practice. Both of those are essential, skill and knowledge and compassion. You've got to have them both. Second, that we at the School of Nursing take great pride in having you represent Longhorn nursing as you embark on your clinical experiences. This event is not only a ceremony, but also a celebration. A celebration of the high quality skilled healthcare and service that you as Longhorn nursing students provide to members of our community. And we are pleased to have one of our outstanding faculty members, Dr. Anna Todd, to provide the keynote for today's ceremony. Dr. Todd is a strong, living, breathing exemplar of the very intelligent and compassionate care that we are recognizing today. Dr. Todd, please. Good afternoon. Oops. 
Good afternoon. I can see everybody here. Wow. Oh my goodness. Welcome to your light the lamp ceremony. Okay. So over the last several semesters, you've learned all about the theory of what it means to be a nurse. And now you're going to be able to provide that nursing care at the bedside and in the community. You'll be applying what you, what we call the science and the art of nursing. But today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the science and art, but particularly the art of nursing. So, the dictionary definition of compassion is as follows. Quote, sympathetic consciousness of others, distress, together with a desire to alleviate it, end quote. So, when I ask the majority of my five children to define compassionate slash compassionate care, these were the following elements. Compassion is when you put yourself in the place of the person who is in need of help and take action to make it better. It's not just sympathy. It, compassion, is when you feel empathetic toward your patient, you meet them where they are, and then do something that will help them be independent. That, at the time, was my 21-year-old, which would, she's now a lot older than that. Um, that was a, she was a political science major. Compassionate cares when you notice the gentleman who's been wearing the same dirty socks for a week in rehab, and you ask him if he wants a fresh pair of socks. That's my daughter who actually graduated, had her undergraduate here with an HDF major, and she's an occupational therapist now. Compassion is walking around in someone else's shoes so you can help them. She's my nurse. Compassion is gentle, kind sympathy. Compassionate care is when you take the time to engage in your patient. It's the little things you do. That's my lawyer. And I decided not to interview my oldest son, who's a financial advisor, especially right now. So I was able, from my small survey, my little mini research survey, I was able to get a sense of what compassionate care means and how it can have a slightly different meaning, but consistent is the notion that compassion is a sentiment that serves as a catalyst that fuels action, action, a caring action. So compassionate, compassionate care is a core element of nursing. In fact, it is so essential to nursing that the very first provision in the ANA Code of Ethics. Who knows about the Code of Ethics? Raise your hand. I know all of you know, especially since I had some of you in class. Okay, so the first provision says, the nurse practices with compassion and respect for the inherent dignity, worth, and unique attributes of every person. So what does compassionate care look like? Who in here has ever spent time in a hospital or knows someone who has? I can tell you from my own personal experience as a patient for two back surgeries, I recall that most of the nurses would glide in the room to quickly ask me what my pain level was on a scale of one to 10 and hand me the medications. I wanted to tell them that my pain medication was 4.2756. It was so interesting to see people gliding in and gliding out. But there was one nurse who at the time she was dressed in what we call the whites in the back and the olden times in her white uniform. And she actually, she was a very seasoned nurse and she came into the room and she pulled up a chair. Wow, what a novel idea. She pulled up the chair and she put her hand in my hand and asked, how are you? And I hadn't heard those words. I almost wanted to say, hey, wait, are you actually talking to me? 
Are you looking at me? Oh, when you're touching me, you're actually willing to touch me. I was so grateful for her that, that day, for her compassion here. Why? Because she needed, she recognized my need of support. She took the time. She spoke to me, not at me. Her eye contact was reassuring. And most importantly, she was present. And to me, that was a present. Just being there was a comfort. One of the most beautiful examples of compassionate care was given to me, shared with me by a friend of mine who's actually a clinical nurse specialist who graduated from the University of Texas School of Nursing. And she is a, she specialized in geriat in the geriatric population. And she, one of her clients was a 90 year old man who was admitted to the hospital following the fall. So the next day, my friend who was the care manager received a call from, <clears throat> from, excuse me, from his wife who said she was too sick to come. And incidentally, she was also admitted into the hospital. So the two of them were placed in the hospital on two different floors. So she recognized that the husband wanted to desperately see his wife of 65 years. They had never been apart. His wife was dying. So my very, very passionate advocate, patient advocate, friend, went down to the ER and asked them if they had a gurney, a stretcher, that she could borrow. And at first she got, oh my gosh, we don't do those things here. These gurneys stay in the ER. So after some convincing, she took that stretcher and put the husband on the stretcher because he was too weak to stand and even too weak to be in a wheelchair to go visit his wife. So she brought them in the room, he, she brought the stretcher into the room so he could be there as his wife passed away. And so it, that to me is, a, is compassionate care. Taking the extra step. So, I've had the privilege of watching my nursing students when they're in their senior year, their last semester in public health. And they deliver compassionate care in multiple settings. And one of the areas that, one of the settings that we go to is the Trinity Center that provides resources for unhoused individuals. And the women experiencing especially the day that we go, it's um, women experiencing homelessness. And the students listening to the stories and the, and the patient, the clients thanking them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here and listening to me as I'm a person. So these are just a few examples of compassionate care. It's a manifestation of the art of nursing. Walk around in your patient's shoes, empathize with them, and most of all, act on it so you may help patients maintain their independence and their dignity. See the human being in front of you, the human being. I would like to add that while you're practicing compassion, you need to practice self-compassion, especially these days. You probably have heard people say, how can you take care of yourself if you don't take care of others? Ah, wait, you gotta take care of yourself. How do you take care of others if you don't take care of yourself? Self-compassion. Most of us choose nursing because we wanna nurture and care for others, right? And many of us in this profession ignore our own self-care and fail to engage in self-compassion, right? So my advice 
And we have a very renowned expert who's actually at the University of Texas. Her name is Dr. Kristen Neff, and she's an expert in self-compassion. She defines self-compassion as a self-attitude that involves treating oneself with warmth and understanding in difficult times and recognizing that making mistakes is part of being human. You are all human. You are not meant to be perfect. She goes on to say that being self-compassionate is treating yourself in the same way you would treat a good friend when you're having hard times, you fail, or you notice something you don't like about yourself by being supportive and loving. So remember, while you're busy making a difference in your patients' lives, that I undoubtedly know you all will, please take time to mindfully shower yourself with self-compassion and know that you're not supposed to be perfect. So Florence Nightingale, the Lady of the Lamp, was the embodiment of compassion and our role model for compassionate care. She was named the Lady of the Lamp because of her reputation, as the dean said, in carrying the lamp in the darkness to attend to suffering soldiers in the Crimean War. The lamp symbolizes the light that we bring as nurses to our suffering patients at the bedside and community. This light is the hope that we give to our patients. Remember to embrace the privilege that we have as nurses to make a difference. Now more than ever, I ask you to continue to carry the lamp and be the light in the darkness. So today marks a celebration your opportunity to become one of the countless nurses who are passionate about compassionate care. So go forth and carry the lamp proudly. So I'm going to leave you with a poem. The poem was given to me by, um, it's actually one of our public health settings, and it is a rest, it's a uh, social program for persons with mild to moderate dementia. And so I'm going to, it is, at the, it's actually called House of Friends, so I'd like to recognize them. So it is called, What Do You See, Nurse? What do you see, nurse? What do you see? What are you thinking when you're looking at me? A crabby old woman, not very wise, uncertain of habit with faraway eyes, who dribbles her food and makes no reply when you say in a loud voice, I do wish you try. Who seems not to notice the things that you do and forever is losing a stocking or shoe, who resisting or not lets you do as you will with bathing and feeding the long day to fill. Is that what you're thinking? Is that what you see? Then open your eyes, nurse. You're not looking at me. I'll tell you who I am as I sit here so still, as I do at your bidding, as I eat at your will. I'm a small child of 10 with a father and a mother, brothers and sisters who love one another. A young girl of 16 with wings on her feet, dreaming that soon now a lover shall meet, a bride soon at 20, my heart gives a leap, remembering the vows that I promised to keep. At 25 now, I have young of my own who need me to guide a secure, happy home. A woman of 30, my young now grow fast, bound to each other with ties that should last. At 40, my young sons have grown and are gone, but my man's beside me. See, I don't know. At 50, once more, babies play around my knee. Again, we know children, my loved one and me. Dark days are upon me. My husband is dead. I look at the future. I shudder with dread. For my young are all rearing young of their own, and I think of the years and the love that I've known. I'm a now an old woman, and, and nature's cruel. Tis just to make old age look like a fool. The body, it crumbles, grace and vigor depart. There's now a stone where I once had a heart. But inside this old carcass, a young girl still dwells. And now and again, my battered heart swells. I remember the joys, I remember the pain, and, and that loving and living life over me. I think of the years, all too few, gone too fast, and accept the stark fast, fact that nothing can last. So, open your eyes, nurse. Open and see.
and see. Not a crabby old woman. Look closer. See me. Thank you, Dr. Todd, for those moving stories and wisdom and words of inspiration. Um, good evening, J1s. Good evening, proud parents and families and friends and crying babies of nursing students, of our proud nursing students. I want to congratulate you for meeting this milestone, J1, and congratulate families and friends uh, and supporters of your nursing students that are here. It's a great milestone in your academic and your career, and uh, you should be very proud, and, I, and we're very proud of you, and you know that your family's also very proud of you uh, as well. Part of my job here tonight is uh, one message I'm um, trying to give you is that not only will you live to J1, but you will also succeed to J1. Right? And to uh, help you through with that, we have a guest speaker, a senior one student, Mercy Hall-Hill, who's going to share her story with you to help you along. Good afternoon, students, faculty, and for the first time in a while, family members. It is so nice to be gathered here in person with such good company and celebrating this milestone with you all today. My name is Mercy Paul Hill. I'm a senior nursing student graduating next semester and a soon to be registered nurse. Many students and faculty have seen me running around the school, but for those who don't know me, I'm a part of the team responsible for setting up all nursing skills classes, simulation, and I've personally assisted many, many of you with your video performance exams. Many of you. <laughs> I've had the privilege of witnessing this cohort overcome obstacle after obstacle, so I am more than qualified to say every student here should be extremely proud of making it this far into their nursing program. Your families that have believed in you since the beginning are proud of you. And the faculty gathered here today for your pinning ceremony, they're proud of you too. And they're eager to help you succeed in your first clinical rotation. These amazing people are not only your instructors, but they are accomplished nurses in their own right. And if I may add, some of the kindest people you will ever meet. It's been my privilege to study under them, lean on them, trust them, let them lend you their expertise. I promise you won't regret it. Whether they realize it or not, I stand here today a more confident nurse and a more confident person because of them. While within the safe and controlled environment of this school's classrooms, you have been introduced to nursing skills you will perform every day for the rest of your career. You have been educated, prepped, and tested on medication administration, how to do it correctly and safely for both yourself and your patient. You are able to create and maintain a sterile field, a vital skill to perform sterile procedures while minimizing the risk for infection. These are not easy skills to master, but they are essential to providing the advanced level of care that our patients need from us. Now, a new challenge awaits, which is applying those skills in the clinical setting. It will be scary taking those first steps towards independence, so allow me to pass on some advice I learned to help you get through those first few days and navigate the noise of your first clinical experience. I remember my first clinical rotation day, 6.30 a.m. on a Monday, yep. White scrub top, new ID bag, stethoscope around my neck, I was shadowing my nurse and I was feeling absolutely lost. No, really, I remember feeling too scared to touch anything too shy to speak to patients, and too concerned to potentially make a mistake 
and attempt to do any of the skills I had actually successfully performed in class. In short, I was way over my head. Of course, my nurse picked up on my anxiety almost immediately. She excused herself, only to return a short while later carrying a breakfast tray. She handed it to me along with instructions to help her elderly patient, we'll call him Joe, with breakfast while she cut up on paperwork. After a quick introduction and asking permission to assist him with his breakfast, I spent the next hour and a half spoon feeding Joe while he sat in bed. It was a tedious process, but our time together meant I got to know a lot about the person in front of me. Like he took his coffee black, he hated the hospital eggs, saying they tasted like powder. He was a Dallas Cowboys fan. That is a bold statement to make in 2020. And he has grandkids, which he loves to talk about because grandkids love to talk about their uh, grandparents love to talk about their grandkids. Uh, Joe was old school. He was polite and a gentleman. Towards the end of my meal with him, my nurse educated, uh, my nurse checked in on us and immediately questioned why I was hand feeding Joe. The entire time I assumed Joe couldn't feed himself, but my nurse's confused expression with my nurse's, uh, with Joe's like guilty expression, it had me rethinking my previous assumption. You see, at the time, visitation was limited at my hospital to minimize the spread of the COVID-19 virus amongst vulnerable populations. Joe had been in the hospital for nine days with no contact except for doctors and nurses. He had no problem feeding himself, but he chose to remain silent just to keep me in the room with him longer. Joe was lonely. He apologized for the extra trouble, but he also told me this. I know nurses and doctors are busy here, but I wanted someone to just come in and talk to me for the longest time. Talking with you has done me as much good as those meds, I'm sure of it. And you're gonna make a great nurse one day, just you wait. Imagine my surprise, no skills, no meds, no care plan, just caring. This far into your education, it's easy to forget why you decided to pursue nursing. Not because we are passionate about medication administration or fully catheter insertion, but because we possess the desire to care for people, even complete strangers like Joe. If you take away anything from what I've told you today, remember that caring is the best foundation for growth in skills, knowledge, and character. In moments where you feel at a loss for what to do, do something that shows you care and let caring guide you into becoming the competent and confident nurses I know you all can be. So congratulations once again, and thank you for allowing me to be a part of today's ceremony. Thank you, Rusty, for sharing your story on compassionate, competent, here. And I know it's going to go a long way for all our, our student ones here. At this moment, I'd like to call Dr. Janice Hernandez, our clinical assistant professor and division chair of holistic adult health nursing. Um, she will join us uh, and she will lead us through the uh, this recitation, the reciting of the Nightingale Pledge, and which all of y'all have a copy. Since we stand up and recite the pledge, uh, that's on front of and she will lead you, and this applies for everyone in all of the, the classrooms. Welcome, welcome everyone, students. Will all students please raise your lighted little candle lamps and recite with me the my Miguel Pledge. I pledge in the presence of this assembly to honorably practice my profession of nursing. I pledge to be a nurse I can be by applying evidence-based practice, engaging in lifelong learning, collaborating with colleagues, and educating those in my care. 
I will do these things, remembering quality patient care is my main priority. I pledge to communicate effectively with my patients and colleagues and to promote teamwork in order to provide optimal care. I pledge to always remember my patients are not just patients, they are people just like me. I pledge to be an advocate for my patients in the most tumultuous times of their lives. I will practice patients in family-centered care and I will make time to listen to my patients' fears and stories. I pledge to practice with integrity. I realize that nursing is not simple discipline. It is an art, a science, and a way of life. Caring is at the center of my being and I will exclude it in all interactions. I pledge to do all of these things, remembering I make a difference in the lives of my patients each day. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez. At this time, I'm going to give instructions on how we're going to do the pinning. And we're going to, I'm going to start by introducing the faculty. And this is going to be for faculty in all of the classrooms. Um, so I'm going to start with Dr. Lee Chin Lin. Please come up to the front of the, of the room. <laughs> yeah, you pick one of those tapes. Uh, Professor Esther Nawocha. She's in front of the room. Dr. Carrie McDonald. Dr. Janice Hernandez. And Dr. Anna Fox. Right, students, now for your instructions. What you're going to do is you're you're going to have your pin in your hand with the pin back separated from the pin top. Okay. When your name is called, approach a faculty pinner, and we'll do three at a time. For now, it looks like we have two faculty in the room. We'll do two at a time here uh, on this one. Okay. Just pick any faculty, your favorite faculty. <laughs> uh, they're, all, they're all your favorite, I know. Uh, after your pin, pose for a photo with your faculty, and then please return to your seats. Uh, parents, family, friends, uh, we ask that if you could hold your applause until the two of your students whose names are called uh, uh, finish uh, hearing their names. That way, your your applause won't drown out the next names. All right. So, let, so let's let's get started. Giselle Serrano. Jerry Pai Reyes. Brian Bain. 
Caitlin Lee. Jessalyn and Rez. Jacqueline Kentos Dot. Rodriguez. Marie Portrait.
Olivia Grace Third. <laughs> Grace Frankie. <laughs> Alisa Cavazo. <laughs> Kennedy Elizabeth Knight. Kristen Marie Hall. Macy Zajac. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Williams. Bryce Scott, the tooth change. <laughs> Hugo Isaiah Martinez.
Emily Franco. Congratulations, students. Everyone, please give yourself and give us the So if you are taller than me, you are probably going to be the back, and if you're about my height, you're probably going to be a front. Oh, she's so pretty! 